welcome to the next lecture in fundamental of electronics we were discussing the basic uh, electronics and uh, in that we started our discussion with the electrons protons and neutrons we discussed the atoms and in this particular lecture we will carry forward so at first we will start with what are the various materials that are used in the field of electronics so generally the materials can be grouped into three important types first is the conductors second semiconductors and third is the insulators in this particular lecture we are going to see what is the basic difference between these materials in terms of their electrical properties so we discuss the atoms and we know that when atom combine then it form a solid crystalline material and this solid crystalline material has a symmetrical pattern so when the atom will combine so it will be forming a solid material now in a particular material there will be so many atoms which will be held together by a bond which is known as the covalent bond and these are created due to the valence electron so we have already discussed valence electron in the previous lecture and the forces of the valence electron so valence electron are the electrons which are present in the last cell of any particular atom and different atom of a crystal is held together by covalent bond now let us take an example of carbon atom so in the carbon atom we see that there are 1 2 3 and 4 valence electron so total 4 valence electron are present in the carbon atom now only two electrons are present in the inner cell so if we take the inner cell only two electrons are there and remaining in the core we have six proton plus six neutron so we know that uh, nucleus is basically a uh, electrically neutral and it is having a proton and a neutron so plus six when we represent in the core it is representing the number of protons present in a particular atom so we are discussing the carbon atom now let us differentiate the insulators conductors and semiconductors in brief now let us start with insulator first so insulator does not conduct electric current under normal condition in normal condition we will see that insulator the current flowing through the insulator will be zero no current will flow through the insulator insulators are made up of compounds rather than single element we don't have the single element material generally we use compounds for insulator they will be having very high resistivity so resistivity will be very high and current will be zero for a normal condition insulator now in insulator the valence electron are tightly bound to the atom so we don't have any free electron for conductivity so valence electron are tightly bound to the atoms some examples are rubber plastic glass mica and quartz these are some of the famous insulators used in different application next we will see the conductors so conductor are opposite to insulator it will conduct electric current and depending upon the type of the material different type of conductivity will be there so if we take the example of metals generally most metals are good conductors for example if we take copper silver gold and aluminum they are all metals and all metals mostly metals are good conductors now these metals will have only one valence electron and which is very loosely bound to the atom so the free electrons available in the conductor are more which conduct electricity so valence electrons are generally loosely bound in case of conductor now we talk about semiconductors so between insulator and conductor somewhere the conductivity will lie 
and it will conduct electric current between the conductors and the insulator. When we talk about the pure state or which is known as the intrinsic state, it is neither a good conductor nor a good insulator. It is somewhere between the conductors and the insulator. If we talk about the example, we have antimony, arsenic, estyle, boron, polonium, tellurium, silicon and germanium. We will see that mostly we are talking about silicon and germanium in this particular subject when we talk about semiconductors. Semiconductors are generally used as compounds in the form of gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, gallium nitride, silicon carbide and silicon and germanium which are most commonly used. So we will see that most of the semiconductors which we are talking about are made up of either silicon or germanium. So if you talk about the single element semiconductors, they will be having four valence electrons. Here we discuss in case of conductors, only one valence electron is there. But single element semiconductor will have four valence electrons. Out of silicon and germanium, silicon are the most widely used semiconductors and the reason we will come to know a little bit later. We talk about the band gap now. We saw that in the valence cell, the electrons will be freed due to the external energy and it will leave the valence cell and it will go to the conduction band jumping from the valence band. So, there will be some energy difference between the valence band and the conduction band and that is known as the energy gap or most famously known to be band gap. That is the energy difference between the valence band and the conduction band. In conduction band, electrons are free to move throughout the material and not tied to an A atom. So, the free electrons which are present in the conduction band uh, can move freely in the atom. They will be not tied to the atom. And that is the reason these electrons start conducting when some external voltage source is applied. Now we talked about the band gap for different materials like insulator, semiconductor and conductor. So the band gap is basically the energy difference between the valence band and the conduction band. So we see that the band gap of three different materials, if we observe, then for insulator the band gap is more compared to the semiconductor and for conductor it is overlapping. So insulator the gap can be crossed only when the breakdown condition occurs. So the electron present in the valence band will move to the conduction band. In insulator only when the breakdown process occurs that is application of the high voltage to the material. In a semiconductor material like silicon, germanium, the band gap will depend what type of material we are talking about. So these band gap, energy difference between the valence band and the conduction band will vary depending upon the type of the material. For conductor, there is a overlap. So electrons can move from valence band to conduction band. So conduction band to valence band and valence band to conduction band. There is an overlap. No electron will be present in the band gap. Electron will move from valence band to conduction band, but electron will not present in these gaps. Let us differentiate and compare the semiconductor atom with the conductor atom. So we will take the example of copper, which is the conductor, silicon, which is semiconductor, and we differentiate both with the help of the valence electron and other electrons which are present in the core of both the atoms. When we talk about the core, it will include everything except the valence electron. So valence electron we will count and whatever may be present apart from valence electron that will be the core. So if we observe the silicon atom and copper atom and count the number of valence electron and other electron present, we will find that copper atom, the valence electron feels an attractive force of plus one. So we have discussed in the previous slide also that only one electron will be present in the outermost cell, that is the valence electron for the conductors. 
whereas four electrons will be present in the outermost cell of any semiconductor that is silicon and germanium. It means that no force trying to hold a valence electron to the atom in silicon than in copper because we have plus four for silicon and plus one for copper. It means no force is there in the valence electron that is holding for silicon than copper. Also, copper valence electron is located in the fourth cell. If we count from the core, we will find that this is located in the fourth cell, whereas silicon is present in the third cell. So, it means that we discussed in the previous lecture also the fundamental that if the electron is far from the nucleus, then it will have more energy. So, valence electron will have the more energy and it will be very far from the nucleus. It means it will be loosely bound. So, in copper, we have the fourth cell, whereas in silicon, we have the third cell. It means it is at greater distance. So, it will be loosely bound compared to the silicon and more conductivity will be there for copper as compared to silicon. So, it will be easier for copper valence electron to scale than silicon. It means the one electron which is present in the valence cell of copper atom will easily leave the valence cell and move to the conduction band. However, more energy will be required to move the electron present in the valence cell for the silicon atom compared to the um, copper atom. So, conductivity of conductors are more compared to semiconductors. Now, the two famous semiconductor material are silicon and germanium. We will differentiate those. Silicon are widely used in diodes, transistors, integrated circuits and other semiconductor devices. So, silicon are more famous compared to germanium and we will see the reason for this. So, if we compare the silicon atom with germanium atom, we find that both silicon and germanium will have four valence electron in its outermost cell. So, it will have four valence electron, both silicon and germanium. So, that is the property of a semiconductor silicon and germanium. Now, if we talk about the germanium location of the valence electron, it is in the fourth cell, while as silicon, it is in the third cell. And this we discussed for conductors also that from the core, if the valence cell is far away, then more energy will be there and it will be loosely bound. It means since valence electron in germanium is located in the fourth cell when silicon is in third cell, silicon is closer to the nucleus compared to the germanium valence electron. So, germanium valence electron have higher energy and it will require smaller amount of energy to escape. So, the energy requirement for the valence electron to escape for the germanium atom will be less compared to the silicon atom. That is, germanium is more unstable at higher temperature and result in excessive reverse current. So, reverse current will flow because of these valence electron which is present in the fourth cell. So, it is highly unstable. Hence, silicon are more widely used in semiconducting material. So, compared to silicon and germanium, we saw that silicon is more stable and hence silicon is widely used in the semiconducting material. Now, we will talk about the covalent bonds which are very important in terms of electrical conduction. So, this is a silicon crystal. Now, what is a crystal? When all the atoms are combined together, it forms a crystal. And a silicon crystal, if you observe, that each atom positions itself with four adjacent silicon atoms. So, here we have one atom of silicon which is present in adjacent to one, two, three, and four other silicon atoms. Silicon atom with its four valence electron will be shared an electron with each of its four neighbor. So, the valence electron of one silicon atom will be shared with the valence electron of other silicon atom which is present in the close proximity. So, this sharing of valence electrons for all the atoms which are present in the close proximity to the central atom will result in eight shared valence electron. 
and that is the state of chemical stability. Now, this sharing of valence electron will produce the covalent bond that will hold the atom together. So, all the eight valence electron will be shared and produce a state of chemical stability and it will be held by a bond which is known as covalent bond. Covalent bonding of germanium is similar to silicon because it has four valence electrons. So, both germanium and silicon will have same characteristic of eight valence electron in total that will form the covalent bond. Now, if we draw the bonding diagram where the central silicon atom is surrounded with four other silicon atom and two red negative signs are shown which are the shared valence electron and this is the silicon crystal all the covalent bonds are being shown. So, so many atoms are there which are hold together with the help of covalent bond. So, this uh, complete the discussion on silicon germanium characteristic and covalent bond. Next lecture we will focus more on conduction in semiconductor due to the holes and the electrons. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.